What's up everyone and welcome to all the testing. Remember the Sunday with Ola where I said that I was really excited about an SSL audio interface. Well, here it is. It arrived. I promised I will try it out and let you guys know what I think about it. So I'm going to make a demonstration of this unit with the focus being on what I consider being important for me as a guitar player, as a home recording guy, and also how it compares to one of my other audio interfaces, the UAD Era, and also my Apogee Ensemble that is my main source of recording here in my office. The Apogee Ensemble is my hub here when I'm recording in my office. That's where I record everything through. And when I'm out on tour or, you know, out traveling or whatever, I can use this UAD Arrow to record myself. And the reason why I'm going with UAD and Apogee is basically because I think their preamps are the absolute best for recording DI guitar. I haven't used uh, DI Box in uh, probably more than 10 years. Uh, because I've been using Apogee cards and just their input preamps for a guitar is just so much better than a lot of the other options that are out there. UAD and Apogee are basically like, you know, expensive uh, consumer level audio interfaces. But with the new SSL2 here, this audio interface, this is a little bit less expensive than the UAD Arrow, for instance. And why am I excited about this? Well, it's obviously because it's solid state logic you know, who made all those mixing consoles. Solid State Logic is a very reputable brand with a good reputation regarding their mixing consoles and, you know, the inputs and preamps of their mixing consoles. So when I bought this, I was just really, really excited to hear how it fared towards something like this. Will the preamps of this SSL be a lot better than on my UAD Arrow or my Apogee Ensemble? So there's uh, three things that I consider being important uh, for me when I look at an audio interface. One of the things that I use the audio interfaces most for is to record my guitars. Okay, so what I mean by that is that you take a cable and hook it up straight into the preamp of the audio interface. This is what you call recording a DI track or a direct input of that matter. Is this the longest cable in the world right now? I can't find the end. There it is. <laughs> Recording myself in DI or direct input on my guitar, it's just a really great way of recording yourself because then you don't have to settle for an amp tone or, you know, anything like that. You can use all of that later. You can reamp using this recorded DI. So I like to use as little as possible in my way of recording. And that's why it's so important for me that, you know, the preamps of the audio interfaces are good enough. It's just the guitar and the cable and that's it. So a couple of things that are important to me when I'm recording myself is one, clarity of your signal. How well do the preamps of the audio interface translate my guitar signal into logic, for instance? The second most important thing would be noise levels. How noisy is this thing when you record yourself? How much noise will be translated into your record track? This is important because when you start to reamp your track, and if you add distortion or whatever, that noise floor is going to get elevated and it's going to become way more apparent when you reamp and use distortion and so on. So that's why it's very important to have low level noise when recording a guitar, for instance, or recording anything for that fact. The third thing, which is not necessarily the most important thing in the world, but that is round trip latency. What latency will I get if I just plug in the guitar and monitor myself through Logic, for instance, that's the round trip latency. How long does it take for the interface to input your signal and monitor it out through Logic Pro X? That's basically round trip latency right there. Very important if you use plugins and want to hear yourself when you play uh, a certain plugin in Logic and recording yourself. Now, depending on how you monitor yourself when you record yourself, having a good round trip latency is probably more important than you think. So those are the three things that are important to me. And those are the three things I'm trying out in this video today. You know, I'm not used to trying out audio interfaces on my channel, but I thought this was really interesting because I was genuinely interested when I bought this and if it would be something I could recommend to you guys for just recording yourself and recording guitar. Like the size of this thing is really, really good. And there's also a SSL2 Plus version, which has a couple more extra headphone outputs. It also has RCA outputs. It has MIDI, stuff like that. But other than that, it still has the two channels and it's just really simple, really simple. Phones, monitor level, monitor mix, and then you have the two inputs right here. But what caught my attention a little bit are these 4K legacy buttons right here, which basically, I guess it's some sort of coloring of the preamps to make it sound like the mixing consoles that SSL are making, the 4000 series, for instance. So I guess this button will kind of mimic that coloring. It's going to be really interesting seeing how it affects the tone. 
So when I record a guitar, for instance, into a preamp like my UAD Arrow or my Apogee Ensemble, I usually just hook it up into the instrument input and I don't put any gain on the track at all uh, because basically the guitar is so loud by itself that if you use gain on your uh, preamp, you're going to distort that signal. That's the premise of what I'm doing in this video is that I keep the preamp gain on zero on all three units. And to measure the noise floor levels, I basically cranked the preamp to max. And then I used a logic analyzer to analyze the noise that the unit is making. For the Apogee Ensemble, there's a little, little bit of noise happening, but worth mentioning is that it has a plus 75 gain range happening, so it's actually louder and you can push it more than these two interfaces right here. If we check the UAD Arrow, for instance, and max out the preamp, the noise levels are extremely, extremely low. And I'm thinking, the Arrow, why would it be less noisy than the uh, Ensemble interface that I have? And my only guess is that I think that because the UAD Arrow is a Thunderbolt 3 interface that gets powered by that one cable, I think it just generates less noise overall. While, you know, the Apogee Ensemble, it has its own power interface and, you know, it goes through your power. So it adds a little, little bit of an external power noise happening or something like that. I think that is what would probably make a difference. And obviously because it has, you know, 10 dB more gain range. Now, if we go to the SSL and I crank it, it's extremely, extremely noisy, uh, unfortunately. It's in line level with a high Z, which high Z is the, uh, like the instrument input that you will want. And it's just really, really noisy. I'm not sure if it's the USB-C cable or connection or whatever it is, but overall it's just noisy as hell as you can see. It's a lot noisier than both the UAD Arrow and the Apogee Ensemble. So on that point, the noise on this unit is it's not acceptable, unfortunately. Now, will it matter when you record yourself with a gain at zero? If you have an environment where you have a lot of noise and your, you know, grounding issues in your uh, building or whatever, then it's definitely going to matter. If you're not having too many grounding issues happening, you have a very low noise uh, environment in your studio, then I don't think it's going to be a problem. Now, how does it stack up with the round trip latency? Well, we're going to find out. So the Apogee Ensemble I have here is connected through a Thunderbolt 2 cable, and I'm getting a round trip latency of 2.9 milliseconds in uh, buffer size 32, okay? So that's, uh, that's pretty low. That's pretty low right there. And with the UAD Arrow, I'm getting 8.5 milliseconds round trip right there, but still like a 1.3 millisecond output. The UAD Arrow has like a built-in processing happening in DSP where you can load in your own plugins and stuff like that onto your tracks before you record. And that might be why it has a longer round trip latency. Now the SSL2 interface has a round trip latency of 7.9 milliseconds. So it's a little faster than the Arrow when it comes to round trip latency, but the Apogee Ensemble is just on a way other level than this. Now, depending on your monitoring situation, this will matter more or less. If you're using the Logic plugins to record yourself, you're definitely going to feel a difference between the UAD Arrow 8.5 milliseconds and the Apogee Ensemble 2.9 millisecond uh, round trip latency. But all in all, this is very, very nerdy. And if you're monitoring yourself through something else while you're recording, this doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, I think the most important aspect uh, for me when I'm trying out or buying an interface would be the clarity of the input preamps. How good will my guitar sound through the preamp, basically? So I made a test. I recorded a loop using this Boss loop station right here. And then I took the same signal into all of these three interfaces right here. And I ended up with these four files right here. So we have the Ensemble signal right here. Then we have the Arrow, the SSL2, and then we have the SSL2 with the 4K engaged right there. So we're going to listen to them one by one. I'll, also, I'll share all of these so you guys can listen to yourself and try and reamp them if you want. But Let's start with the ensemble. UAD arrow. SSL2. And then the SSL2 with the 4K legacy mode engaged.
And you might say, you know, I didn't hear a difference. Well, it's because the differences are so, so slight. You might not hear the difference right here when you're listening to an individual DI track and signal, but you will hear it when you add distortion to it or a plug-in. And while these are very, very similar, the biggest difference that I'm getting is that overall, the regular SSL input signal is just slightly lower in dB than the rest. While if you engage the 4K, it kind of backs it up a little bit. So if I compare both of these interfaces with my Apogee Ensemble, which is sort of like, that's where I record everything, basically. Now, if I compare all of these signals using a match EQ in Logic, it gets a lot more apparent where the differences are. So, if I compare my arrow to my Ensemble, then you can see the arrow is slightly brighter over 10k hertz. So, it is a little bit different, but the difference is basically like 1 or 2 dB or something like that. But other than that, both the U of the arrow and the Ensemble are really, really close on how they sound when you record your input. That's, I think that's why I like them both, because they're basically the same sounding. Now, if you compare the SSL 2 in regular version versus the Ensemble, you can see there's a little bit of a shift happening here. The SSL signal is a little bit brighter over 3000 Hz. Overall, the SSL interface is a tad bit brighter, actually. It's really a small, small margin right here, but it makes it a little bit different sounding. It's not the same. If you compare the SSL 2 versus my Ensemble interface, you get this comparison right here. So, it's basically the same. It has a couple of differences here and there. The SSL is a little bit darker upper uh, in the upper 15,000, but that's not something you're gonna hear in a guitar single, I mean, and not necessarily something that you would need in a guitar single. So, all in all, I think the inputs of the SSL is on par with both the UAD Arrow and the Ensemble. But how does it sound if we put it on 4K mode? Let's see the difference right here. Here's the regular SSL signal. And here's the 4K version. And as you can see here, when you engage the 4K mode, it basically shifts and makes the whole input preamp a little bit brighter. It's like 2.5 decibel up until 20K, where it goes up to almost 5 decibels plus, and then a little bit less bass, probably. And what I'm hearing when I'm just listening back to front of these two DI signals is that the, uh, the high end is distorting a little bit more when you engage the 4K. This is not something bad, it's more of a flavor of the coloring, basically, and if you would record a microphone, maybe this would be really beneficial as well. It will just brighten up your voice a little bit, but for when recording guitar, I don't think having those extra high ends will help. I personally much more prefer when it's more of a dumbed down signal, because uh, all those high frequencies on a DI track, they don't always translate well when you reamp it. And this is the sound with uh, the archetype plane engaged. Regular. <laughs> k It has a slight bit more output in the 4K. So to conclude this, and also to compare this SSL2 with my UAD Arrow, maybe it's not as well built or well enclosed as the UAD Arrow that's completely silent. You know, when I push the inputs and just check the noise, I think the preamp sound almost on par as on the UAD Arrow and the Apogee Ensemble. At the end of the day, I think that is what's the most important for a lot of people. And for the price, this is like 240 euros, which is half of the UAD Arrow. For the price, I think the preamps are absolutely kick-ass, which would make sense. It's a solid state logic product. If the preamps would have sucked, it would have been a problem. But the preamps are really good, and it's half the price of a UAD Arrow, and I mean, this uh, ensemble is like 2000 something like that, so you can't really compare them. So would I recommend it to a US guitar player that's out there to try and record yourself with DI? Yes, I think so. I think the preamps sound better than some of the units uh, in the same price level, and uh, maybe they have other features that this does not have, but this right here is more than enough, for me at least, and what I'm doing. And for that, I think it's uh, pretty price-worthy, actually. 
So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this little nerdy test right there. I'm happy that I tried it out. I don't think it's better than the UAD Arrow and the UAD Arrow, I'll continue to use that. I'm very happy with that, but it is a very good competitor right there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.